Well, uh, Paul said something one day, and we welcome you to abundant life. He is averted. He said, what I received from the Lord, I gave to you. So the different thoughts and impressions that I have received from the Lord this week, I want to give to you. And the Lord reminded me that we had this, and most of you know this is a, a scroll. Um, this is how the Jewish scriptures were originally uh, read. And I did a little research, and some of you know something about the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, and you go to uh, Israel, in one of their museums, you can see uh, scripture of Isaiah that was written thousands of years ago. And what's interesting is that the scroll of Isaiah, listen to this, 20 feet long. 20 feet long. So what's interesting to me is uh, in Luke chapter 4, it says on a particular Sabbath day, Jesus was given the scroll and he opened it. So I'm sure it just wasn't right there, but he you know, scrolled around because he knew what he was looking for, wasn't he? He was looking for a, a, a portion from uh, Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon him. You know? And I want to say, remind us of something very important. How blessed we are to have the scriptures. What a gift. What a gift. What a gift the Holy Scriptures are to us. You know, there's so many diverse philosophies out in the world saying, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. All sorts of false philosophies out there. Uh, but God says, this book, this book is the only book that I say, this is my book. This is God's book. You know, in the Old Testament, there were different times when God's people needed to be revived because they had sort of fallen away. Any of us ever fall away or slip away? You know, one of the things that they did, they had a, uh, what one of the, one of the founders of uh, WBMJ said, Mama Ruth, she said, you need to have a revival. You know, if you want to have a personal revival, then we need to have revival. You know, get back to God's word. There's so much value, so much value. Uh, the scripture says it's more valuable than gold, more valuable than, than silver. And God's book, God's instruction can do more for you and me than any other book. Uh, in the whole universe. I probably have in my library two or three thousand books. None of them not even close to this book because this is the only book that God says, this is my inspired word. I saw something interesting the other day. A lot of us know what AI is, which is in the news a lot today, artificial intelligence. So now you can get AI counseling. You can get on your your if you're on your computer and connect it with AI, artificial intelligence, and you can start telling the computer your problem. And the, the computer will talk back to you. Well, how do you feel? Tell me about it. You know, and all of that. It is it's a, a computer generated thing. You say what well, a computer will never be able to look you in the eyes, will never be able to feel your body language, or feel the emotion what you're going through. You know, one of the beautiful things that God says about his word, David said in Psalm 119, he says, your words are my counselors, you know? And so one of the things you've heard me say, uh, I'm in counseling. Okay, I, every day I'm in counseling. Every day I open the book and I, I'm in counseling every day. It's a good thing to do, be in counseling uh, with God's word. And especially if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, that means that the counselor, the one who inspired God's word, is in us. You know, I read something, I'm still praying for her. A, a young woman in Sweden, physically healthy, 28 years old, maybe you saw it on the news, but she has a mental disorder, mental problems, and gone through the doctors and the psychiatrists finally said, there's nothing more that we can do for you. Uh, there's just no hope. So she is now in the process of going to euthanasia in that country, you can do it, where she, she's ending her life, holding her boyfriend's hand as she does that. You know, and I just, I, mean, I, I prayed for her. I said, God, I got her name, but I said, God, I repeat, Lord, those lies, I repeat. 
that darkness off of her. I rebuked the box, except I, just, I interceded for her. You know, sometimes the way God uses us, we see things in society, we see things happening to people. For example, on Wednesday night, uh, uh, Jolene caught a bus to get here, and on the bus stop there was a young lady who just was in a bad place, you know, and so we, we lifted up that young lady and others like, like them. So, you know, when you see things happening in society, many times the will want you to hear prayers so and lift up that person and pray uh, and give a city, you know, but I'll, I'll say this. Um, there's a place for psychologists, there's a place for psychiatrists, but the, the ultimate counselor is God. And the scripture says, it talks about the comfort of scriptures, the hope of scriptures. So we just declare this word over yes. you, but also that woman. Um, <clears throat> Romans, I guess, 15, 13. May the God of hope, where is he? Okay, that way? Yeah, yeah. Okay. May the God of hope, young lady, fill you with all joy and hope and believing that you may overflow the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Declare that for others also in need. All right, good. Now, we've been looking, and let's, Lord, just help us, oh Lord God, to, to uh, beat people off the book. Lord, to not just sort of give lip service, oh yeah, uh, Lord help us, like Jeremiah said, your words were found and I ate of them, and your word became to be the joy, the rejoicing of my heart when I call by your name. Uh, man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Praise the Lord. You know, one of the things I like about Mark Johnson, when you see each other, I said, what's the new word? Because he always has, from that morning, time with God, he always has some scripture, whether it's from the epistles, the Proverbs, or Old Testament, he's always got something. You know, we should live like that. And, you know, we know the Jews went out when they were in the wilderness, and uh, for six days a week, what would they do every morning? Yeah, they get manna. Okay, the the manna man said that. Okay, they get the manna, and then you know, Keith Green years ago had a wonderful song about that. Manna burgers, they had manna fritters, they had manna this, manna that. You know, I'm sure they prepared it a lot of different ways, but they got fresh manna. So I just encourage you, if you want to, you know, the, the scripture says the outward man is slowed down, but the inward man is renewed day by day. Yes. One of the ways we renew our inward person is with the scriptures, you know, get alone with God. And there's a place for devotional, no doubt about that, and listening to walk podcasts and all, yes, 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 but there's nothing that compares to get alone with God to God speak to me today. All right, good. So, we have been looking at the book of Romans, uh, Many people say this was you know, Paul's finest work, most all scriptures, God's work. Uh, but in Romans 1, 2, and 3, it's the bad news. And it's the bad news that we human beings have a big, big, big sin problem. You know, some of you probably know the one of the definitions of sin. If you think of a target, sin is this is the target. You know, our target is to live for God, to live in communion with God, to live in obedience to God, to live in sweet fellowship with God. But sin is missing the target. We, we're what we're, uh, what's it say in Isaiah? We're all have gone astray. Everybody gone, what? His own way. Well, the last verse in the book of Judges, I know this never applies to you, but it says everybody did what was right in their own eyes. You know, so that's a definition of missing the mark. And so Paul, in Romans 1, 2, and 3, uh, he says it's true of the Gentiles. And uh, in chapter 2, the Jews say, well, we're Jews. We have the covenants. We have the scriptures. And Paul sort of takes them to task. He says, basically, he says, you hypocrites. He says, if you're judging others, you're doing the same thing in your own life. You know? And so we're all, we all got problems, you know, and so uh, the Jews can't depend on the fact that they're, they're Jewish lineage, you know. We all have a sin problem, all have sin, all have fallen short of the glory of God. And so Paul, who knew the scriptures, 
Paul was a very educated man. And so uh, he knew the scrolls. And so three times in the New Testament, in different books, he mentions a particular verse out of the book of Habakkuk, the just shall live by faith. Okay? Uh, I am not ashamed. And he says in Romans 1, I am not ashamed. No man out of the winds of the hymn and in the question, for there they use not salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God uh, for everyone who believes, for the Jew and the Gentile. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith. Just look at it. As it is written. Okay, as it is written, as not a script okay, a push to ask the push to for the faith in the law, or just to live by faith. And it's important for us to understand that we start the Christian life uh, walking in faith, but it doesn't stop there. There's an ongoing process of, of walking by faith, you know, and so the heart of the gospel. Remember, gospel means what? Good news. Good news. I think that's a little lame. I think it's great news. <laughs> Best news you will ever hear. Yes. Think of it this way. Let's just say, let's just say that you made some really, really bad, bad, bad financial decisions. You, you, you signed things you shouldn't have signed. You find yourself in debt for a billion dollars. You know, debt in prison, bankruptcy for eternity, you know, and, and you know, a million lifetimes you couldn't pay that thing back. You know, and somebody comes along and they pay that debt that you owe. And you're free from that. Yeah. Yeah. Woo, yeah. Woo. yeah. And it gets even better. Then that same person <coughs> puts a billion dollars in the junior account. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. This is basically uh, what we're going to see what Jesus did for us. Right. We had a debt that we could not pay, and he had a debt that he did not owe. That's it right there. So uh, in Genesis, it says, Abraham believed God and, and was reckoned to him as righteousness. So God is a just God, and God doesn't communicate or have fellowship with the sin, uh, with rebellious people. And so uh, there's the problem. And so Romans expounds how this unfolds. In Isaiah 53, one of John Foster's favorite chapters, it says, By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. He shall bear their iniquities. So Jesus on the cross. You know what? I know in a sense I'm preaching to the choir, but it's good for us to, to remember the, the foundations of our faith. You know, because uh, salvation is not, well, I believe Jesus once and then I'll sort of get out of life and I'll pay for my salvation on the installment plan. No, no, no. It was paid for once and for all by Jesus. Now, I have an illustration here today. Um, and uh, Sometimes you, uh, you meet people and you get talking with them and then you might sort of throw the question to well, you know, when you die one day, what do you think happens? And some people say, well, I think I'm going to go to heaven. And I said, well, why? And I said, well, I've been a pretty good person. You know, I've, uh, I've helped people, I've given money, I've served charities and everything. You know, and it sounds good, but the, the, the truth of the matter is, uh, 
that uh, we have all sinned, the Bible says. We've all rebelled. We've all, we've all messed up. Would you agree with that? Yes. You know, and so it isn't like, it, now, some people like to think God is a good old grandpa. Grandpa will say, ah, it's okay. Come to heaven. You know, you messed up a little bit. You did so much good. Come on in. Now, that's not the way it works. You know, in God's economy. Uh, you know, that, so that, that something, this is why Romans 1, 2, and 3 tells you there's a big sin problem. But thankfully God uh, saw the problem, and even before the problem was there, God already put the solution in effect, All right? Um, we're going to talk a lot more about that. But anyway, the thing is, uh, we all have a sin problem. And so, what God did, Jesus agreed to go along with it. He says, somebody needs to pay the price. Somebody needs to pay the price. Uh, because the scripture says the wages of sin is death. You know, so uh, there's the ugliness of sin. So we know on that, on that day, Jesus, I think it was David Mariah, or somebody said that uh, Jesus would beat them so much. Some of you have seen the movie The Passion. And they said, it, you know, maybe it was Mark. Yeah. They said it didn't really do justice. I mean, as, as horrible as that was, I mean, he was beyond recognition. He was so beaten. He was so scarred. Uh, he, he was taking your punishment, my punishment. He was taking the, the, uh, the cost of our, our punishment upon himself. And he was covering us, covering us with his blood. Psalm 32 says, Blessed is he whose sin is covered. And so the, the beauty of this is, you know, Jesus on that cross, what was he doing? He was taking the punishment for your sins. And one of the most astounding verses in the whole Bible is that he who knew no sin became sin. The Holy Son of God became sin to all of your depravity. That's a, that's a theological word. Your depravity, your ugliness, your rebellion, all of it upon himself. Upon himself. And so for the first time in all of eternity, in all of eternity, God did this. He turned his back on his son. Because his son had become sin for you and I. The Father cannot fellowship with sin. The beauty, the glory of it is. Jesus took it upon himself so that those, not everybody, not everybody, no, we are not, everybody out there, everybody out there is not a child of God. But the Bible says as many as receive him, to them he gives the right to become the children of God. Because those who put their faith in him. Guess what? Here we are, brand new start. Let's give God a glory clap. You know, in 1 John chapter 1, uh, verse 7, if we, uh, if we confess our sin, if we walk in the light, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And this is why it says in Hebrews chapter 4, it said we have we have boldness, confidence to enter into the presence of God because of Jesus, because he's our high priest, right? Uh, you don't need to go to a priest. I mean, well, you do need to go to a priest. You need to go to Jesus. Jesus, your high priest, because that high priest shed his blood for you. He took the, he took the nails for you and for me. Um, thank God, thank God for that. So, you know, your sin, my sin, uh, received its deserved condemnation. God was pouring out his wrath upon his son. 
wrath that you and I deserve. And uh, it's not, and I indicated this earlier, it's not as God's righteousness is easily satisfied. Oh, you messed up. It's okay. No, 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 no. That, that's not God. God is holy, holy, holy. And so uh, it, the full price had to be paid. It was paid in blood. You want to know how much you're worth? Way beyond silver and gold. His blood is shed for you. That's how much you're worth. You redeemed, Peter said, not with silver and gold, but redeemed with the blood of Christ. And this is why when you and I put our trust in what Jesus did for us on the cross, we repent of our sins and we say, God, I don't want to live for myself or the world anymore. I want to live for you. I, I trust you to have you, Jesus, that you died for me. You're my Savior, Lord. My Lord, here I am, Jesus. You know, that miraculous moment. And that's why it says in Romans 8, 1, it says, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. What a wonderful thing. Or in Romans 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. You know, Paul said something interesting, which some Christians said at uh, they said would say, Paul, oh, you shouldn't say that. That's not a good confession. No. Paul said, first Timothy, this is faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world the same sinners of who I am the chief son. Paul oh, thought you were a new creation. Call oh, yourself the chief son. Well, he's a new creation, but it's a good thing for new creations to remember who we used to be. To remember what God saved us from, from the, the, from the depraved individuals, uh, the, the lost individuals that we were. So it, it's good to remember uh, that. So I think Paul is doing that because remember, Paul was a persecutor. Paul put Christians into Christian, Christians into prison, uh, was consenting to their death, uh, and so. Um, you know, and so Paul is, is, let me say this, because I'm reminded last weekend, on Sunday at 4 o'clock, uh, Reuben, Mark and I went to a, uh, a church, a Bethany church in, in, uh, in uh, hey, a church plant, and the brother there, a good, good brother, uh, Cameron Williams, uh, he gave a message about, the, your testimony is a powerful thing. So, Paul's testimony is a powerful thing. You see, that's who I used to be, but now if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creature. So I want to say to you, individual Christian, if you're a Christian, you, your testimony is powerful. It's powerful. Um, Revelation 12, 11, they overcame the enemy, the devil, by the word of the testimony. Okay? And so share your testimony with other people. Say, can I tell you my story? And people like to hear stories. So tell them your story, how messed up you used to be, you know? Or what a good person you were, and God thought you were so worthy to come to heaven that, yeah, I could hear it. <laughs> but I am coming in for a landing pretty soon here. So Paul goes on to say, however, for this reason, I receive mercy, and in me, Christ Jesus might show all long suffering as a patron to those who are going to believe for everlasting life. In other words, Paul's saying, if God can save me, he can save anybody. Yeah. And then he says, now to the king eternal, mortal, visible, God who alone is wise, be glory, honor, and praise. Right. So, when, when Paul is talking in Romans 1, 2, and 3, in the middle of it, uh, one of my favorite verses, it says, do you despise the riches of his goodness, his kindness, his forbearance? is long suffering, knowing that it's that goodness that we need Because sometimes when we're messed up or we know somebody messed up, that don't necessarily mean, you know, you're really messed up. You know, just love on the Lord, the love of God. And uh, I know I have backslidden a number of times in my life. You know, faithful to call it, but you know, different ways to backslide, you understand. You know, backslide in different ways. But it's always been the kindness of God that drew me back into his presence. 
You know, it wasn't like God was saying, <laughs> no, no, God's arms were like a prodigal father, open arms. So, you know, when you stray or we stray, the father is saying, come on, come on, come on. Oh, what a God. Now, one last observation is this, that and I read this by somebody who lived over 150 years ago. But the beauty about biblical truth is eternal truth. And he said this, God is as glorious in punishing sin as he is in pardoning sin. In other words, when, when, when Jesus was taking the wrath of God on himself, because the Holy God, Christ had to be paid. That the brother was saying that God was as glorious in that moment, punishing sin, so that you and I might be punished. You know, it's, it's the glory of His holiness, it's the glory of His love. There's a scripture that says, mercy and truth have kissed together. You know, and so, um, as it says, He bore our sins on the country. And the last thing I'll share is. Uh, that this is one of my psalms. I read a psalm a day. It's a good thing to do. You read a psalm a day, you go through the book of psalms twice a year. It's a really good thing. And I love the psalm. Sometimes the psalmist, Psalm 12 or 11 of today, he says, I put my trust in the Lord. How can you say to me, fly away like a bird to the mountain? That's Proverbs 11, verse 1. Yeah, you go to I mean, I and yeah, go to Psalm 55. He says, Oh, if I could have wings like a bird, just fly away. You know, yeah, I mean, the Psalms are real, real people going through real stuff. You know, so the Psalms are powerful things. Anyway, uh, my Psalm of this past week, one of them, verse 7, verse 7, 17, he says this I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. Yeah, and sing praise for the name of the Lord our God. Now, if God is sort of a, ah, 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 then he gets sort of ah, praise. But he is so righteous that he loved us so much that Christ needed to be paid. Listen to this. It says, he is just. Here it is. It's a book. He is just. And he is the justifier of those who come to him. God is just. And he's the justifier of those who come to God. Yeah. 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 I know many of you have done this, but let's just do it again. Let's just say a, a prayer. Uh, because maybe somebody here you never really have said, maybe you give a mental set to the fact that Jesus died for you is a historical fact, but you never really uh, said, Lord, I am a sinner. Thank you that you died for me. Lord, I don't want to live the way I've been living anymore. I want to live for you. So why don't you pray with me? Put your hand on your heart. Pray with me. Lord, I thank you that you died for me. That you died for my sins. For my depravity, for my depravity, for my rebellion, for my rebellion, for my ugliness, for my ugliness. Thank you that you paid the price for me. Thank you that you paid the price for me. And I want to confess you right now. Confess you right now. Receive you now. Receive you. My Lord, as my Lord, as my Savior, as my Savior, I repent, I repent of anything not pleasing to you. Of anything not pleasing to you. And I set myself, I set myself to live for you, God. Live for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That you, the Son of Man, became the Son of God. Who became the Son of Man? That I might become a child of God. I confess you, I confess you, my Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. Jesus. 
I want to give you an opportunity to do something right now that's going to uh, resonate in heaven. The Bible says that if down here on earth, you say to somebody, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, I'm trusting in him. The Bible says that up in heaven, uh, Jesus is confessing up before the throne of heaven. So if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you put your faith in him. Why don't you turn to two or three people and, and let them know Jesus is my Lord, Jesus is my master. Go ahead. Jesus. Two or three others. Why don't you stand up? You go 